and uh, I will uh, I'll be happy to discuss with you afterward uh, on this call or uh, by email. So the uh, what we will see today uh, together, in, uh, we talk about constraint acquisition, a particular uh, field in uh, artificial intelligence. And just to uh, discuss about the, the presentation of this afternoon, we try to uh, make uh, <coughs> uh, some illustration about the link between uh, constraint programming and uh, the other field, uh, machine learning and data mining. So uh, with the Samuel Ludny, the first presentation, with, uh, it is a, a very nice presentation on the way that uh, data mining can be uh, uh, can be seen as uh, the different tasks in data mining can be tackled using constraint programming in a declarative way. So we uh, saw together uh, this uh, uh, on this uh, first part how uh, CP this direction CP can boost um, um, uh, data mining and machine learning task uh, using CP. Uh, and now we will see the other direction where uh, machine learning can uh, can help uh, different uh, uh, tasks in CP, also the, the other direction. So these two directions are the main uh, things that we uh, try to, to see together in uh, the working group caviar in uh, the GDR via. So uh, I invite you to uh, check the web uh, site and also to subscribe to the mailing list if you want to be, to be in touch on all the activities of this group. So the first <coughs> talk uh, of this afternoon was about declarative data mining. So now you have an idea about how uh, specialized uh, algorithm in data mining can be boosted using a constraint programming where they allow uh, the user to specify different uh, constraints and the different kind of the user constraint in, in their model. Uh, the second part, we'll talk about constraint acquisition. And we will see together what is uh, what we want to mean about this, uh, this topic. Okay, so uh, for the direction uh, from machine learning data mining to CP and how all the approach and algorithm and techniques in, uh, in this uh, very large domain which is machine learning in a, in a large sense, and also data mining also, now how they can boost uh, CP task uh, in general. So <clears throat> here we have two main uh, parts. So the, the first part is how to use machine learning uh, in the solving uh, part. Uh, you already have uh, several talks about the CP uh, during this school. And you know, uh, I think now, you have an idea about uh, what CP uh, is able to do uh, and uh, which kind of problem that can be tackled using CP. And we can have this, uh, uh, this separation in CP where we have in one side the, uh, the, the modeling step where we express, we have uh, to declare uh, our, our problem using constraint. And we will submit <coughs> this model to a solver and here we have a, a solving step uh, which is combined by uh, a search uh, uh, process and the propagation process okay so uh, uh, machine learning and data mining there's several works that try to um, improve the resolution uh, using data and models uh, so we can i have just uh, here give you some examples and uh, there is a lot of works in uh, each uh, point here so the first one is uh, to try to, uh, to define what we call an adaptive solver in the sense that we have a problem and we will try to uh, make it adaptive uh, according to uh, what uh, uh, we get as data during the resolution. For example, I can say that for this point, uh, at this point, I can uh, make uh, the consistency level uh, lower or stronger and so on. Or I can adapt also the way that I will select the variables and the values uh, during search. So we can <coughs> have uh, several techniques of machine learning, uh, statistical uh, approaches and also symbolic ones that try to improve this, uh, this part. And we can also 
we talk about algorithm selection, it depends on, we can imagine that we have a portfolio of uh, several algorithms that try to solve the same instance or the same problem. And we try to find the best algorithm to select for a given instance of the problem. And also we can talk about closed learning where <coughs> it is a, um, uh, that uh, make uh, the SAT solver now uh, very efficient in terms where we can um, handle um, a very huge instances. So the closed learning here during the resolution, we can stop and check the conflicts and say that now I can learn something that helped me in, in the resolution. And uh, the learning here will learn some clauses and these clauses will uh, avoid us to uh, explore a part of the search that are already not uh, really interesting in terms of finding solution or to prove that is a, a, a satisfiable uh, instances. And also we can talk about uh, finding, uh, uh, so using data mining in the, in the, uh, in the resolution where <clears throat> uh, we can uh, imagine that we have a solver and uh, that try to select variables, values, and there is uh, several values that were, will be pruned during search because they are inconsistent and so on. And all these uh, traces uh, can be uh, seen as a data set as shown uh, as presented uh, before by Samir. And we can try to find uh, interesting patterns in these uh, traces to use them as uh, subtrees or something like this during the resolution. So uh, nowadays there is a lot of works that try to improve uh, the solvers, the CP solvers using uh, different techniques from machine learning and data mining. And uh, what uh, we are interested in, uh, on is the second part where machine learning and data mining can also help a lot in modeling step, in the modeling step. So I have problem to, <coughs> to solve and we can uh, imagine that from data, uh, several uh, previous solution, non solution and so on, we can from this uh, historical uh, resolution or solutions, we can try to uh, induce or infer uh, a declarative model. So in this direction, uh, also we can, um, we can talk about a lot of works uh, that try to use uh, to extract empirical model uh, using neural networks, decision trees and so on. And also in uh, optimization tasks, uh, there are several works that try to learn uh, the good boundaries to use for objective variables. And uh, this uh, uh, part is also using a statistical um, techniques. And we can also talk about constraint acquisition where uh, the user want to solve something, a, a combinatorial problem. And we ask constraint acquisition to extract automatically the set of constraints. And we will uh, see in, in deeper on this, this part. Okay, so uh, let's go for the outline of this, uh, of this presentation. I will start with a, um, a brief overview on what we call version space learning in machine learning. And we, uh, we will try to see uh, uh, the, the parallel with concept acquisition. And we will, <clears throat> because uh, concept acquisition is rooted on this uh, approach in machine learning. Then we will present and we will define uh, the constraint acquisition problem and the convergence problem, which is the problem that we are concerned uh, on. Then we will uh, talk about some uh, algorithms and systems that uh, solve uh, this problem. And we'll take time to discuss uh, our main contribution in this field, which is uh, quack for quick acquisition. We will see what, uh, uh, what is interesting in this system, okay? And then we, uh, take, we will take time to discuss uh, some uh, limitation directions and some interesting points that, uh, uh, that, that can be uh, interesting for, uh, uh, for, uh, for you. Uh, I will, uh, at the end of this presentation, uh, if you will take the slides, uh, I give some exercises to just to 
to illustrate the different algorithms and different techniques here that help you to, to see uh, and the power of uh, concert acquisition. And if needed, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to send me an email if you want to, to see the exercise together or tomorrow, this afternoon uh, on Discord. And I will end with the, uh, uh, if, if the time uh, allow us to, to, to see some, uh, some demonstration or, uh, of Quark, okay? So <clears throat> let's go for the motivation. So uh, concert acquisition, uh, the context is we have a problem uh, that try to solve the uh, time tabling problem, scheduling, planning, uh, combinatorial problems. And uh, here, uh, you will try to write down uh, the concert network. So the concert network, you have uh, several um, uh, definition during this uh, school where we have a set of variables, a set of uh, domain of these variables, which constitute the, the vocabulary and a set of relation or constraint where we express our problem. I can do this, I cannot do this and so on and so on. And this set of constraints, they will be submitted to a CP solver. And here, uh, an artificial intelligence behind, we're using the search uh, mechanism and the uh, um, propagation uh, mechanism will find the solution for the user. So the step of producing the constraint network is not uh, a very uh, easy task. And uh, uh, all the CP community uh, are okay to say that the modeling constraint networks require a fair expertise. So we, we need to have an expert in CP to write down uh, a, a very efficient and very uh, uh, translation of our problem or description of our problem using constraint. And also when the user try to express his constraint network, in general, we have uh, some uh, conceptual and technological gap. What is the implicit part of the problem, the explicit, and uh, sometimes we miss a lot of things in, in, uh, in this uh, modeling step. And also the fact that there is a user that try to write down this different constraints it's an error prone step where we can introduce a lot of errors and at the end we can get solutions that are not exactly the good ones or we can remove interesting solution because we have a, an over constrained uh, network. And also we, in this step, it's very hard for a human to take uh, advantage of raw data in the sense that imagine that we have uh, an uh, solution of one, two years of solutions uh, and we try to analyze all the solution to get uh, a model or a constant network that will produce new solutions in the future. For example, I can take uh, the example of uh, carpooling where uh, we have uh, passengers and drivers and we have a historical of uh, all the, the, uh, all the trajectories uh, of uh, one month of uh, a given uh, um, a given city and from this I, will, I would like to uh, analyze all this data and uh, find uh, a CP model that produce uh, an optimized solution or a good solution that satisfy all the drivers and all the passengers. And this is just an example. So taking uh, uh, this raw data and uh, produce a, a declarative model it's not uh, easy in engineer. So the need here is to have an automatic, uh, uh, an automatic uh, modeler or modeler assistant that will help us to build our constraint uh, network. So uh, we are interested uh, on the way that we define a learning process where instead of asking the user to write down the set of constraints, I can just present uh, some solution or no solution or asking uh, some question and according to the classification of uh, the solution no solution i will learn automatically the constraint network so now instead of asking the user to write down the constraint i will just ask him make an assumption on the user that is able to see something which is wrong or which is correct and say that I accept this or I don't, cannot accept this uh, solution. Before, for example, I can present a user a timetabling and he will say, no, it's, it's impossible for Monday. I cannot have four 
hours uh, of the given lecture or something like this. So uh, according to this uh, exchange between the user and the, and the learner, we will acquire or we will learn the constraint network. Okay. So this is for, for the motivation. Uh, now le le let me just <coughs> talk about the version space learning where uh, you, you will see together that there is a, so, uh, there is a um, uh, similarity between the problem that we want to solve in constraint programming and what uh, machine learning community uh, did in, in, in this field uh, uh, of uh, version space learning. So the version space learning it's a domain which is introduced by the, the, the notion of version space was introduced by Tom Mitchell uh, at that time in 82 uh, as framework uh, for understanding the basic problem of supervised learning within the context of solution search. So uh, here, just um, to, to, to explain the thing, here we have a set of attributes. Okay, and this attribute will take value in a given domain. So here we have the vocabulary, what we will express as solution or no solution or instances. And we have a concept and it is the Boolean concept or a Boolean function where given an instantiation, you will say that it's positive or negative. It's dangerous or not. It's negative or positive. It's acceptable or not and so on. So this kind of, of, of classification. So if uh, given a an instance, uh, a full instantiation of the variable. So each variable will take all of each attribute will take a value, and uh, the function will say zero if a it's a negative instance. So it will say one if the so, uh, b is a, a positive instance. It's a solution. Okay, and. Uh, here, um, the, the, the function, uh, the concept here can be described or can be expressed using predicates, uh, predicates on this set of, uh, of attributes. And this set of predicates uh, that express this function, if we give an instance, you will say, I accept or not. For example, here, uh, here we have a concept or a function which is equivalent to a first predicate and the negation of the second predicate or uh, predicate number three, okay? And in general, uh, the, the machine learning community is uh, um, respect the, the, the work and respect the attention to pure uh, conjunction, uh, conjunctive concepts. What does it mean? It means that the function here can be expressed using only a conjunction. So, uh, in other sense, we cannot uh, have uh, a concept expressed with negation or disjunction. There is some uh, different uh, several works that uh, try to uh, uh, to uh, to propose a solution where we have a, a disjunction, negation, and uh, the most of uh, the work are in pure uh, conjunctive concepts. And the link with our uh, concept programming is exactly is uh, uh, obvious in the sense that concept network are conjunction of constraint. okay? So, uh, so we have uh, attribute domains and we have a concept and we uh, have what we call the space, uh, 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 the space of all possible functions. So uh, all uh, possible functions that we can have is called the hypothesis space, okay? And uh, a version space is a subspace of, uh, of this space, which is consistent with the training set. So it means that if I have some positives and some negative, so I will try to find uh, a function here that classify or that is uh, that classify correctly this training set. And the version space learning, uh, the task of uh, is, uh, so the version space learning has uh, the task to search a, uh, for function that correctly classify the positive and negatives. So this is the main, uh, 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 so this is the objective of, of virtual space learning. So le let me just illustrate this uh, using uh, this, uh, this example. So here we have a domain and uh, the attributes. So 
or here we have all possible instance. So all example, all uh, possible instance, and we can have as an input uh, a training set. So we have this training set is an already classified example. So we have already classified this one as positives and already classified and this part or negative. And the objective is to find or to learn uh, a function that can classify correctly the point that are outside the training set, the unseen instance. Which is an end in an inductive, uh, which is the main uh, objective of uh, of machine learning. So we learn, and we have uh, some seen examples, and we try to classify the unseen uh, uh, examples. So, in the other side, we have uh, the uh, hypothesis uh, space, all the version space that can be represented uh, using a lattice. So. In uh, <coughs> so in the top we have all uh, uh, so so in uh, in the top we have a uh, the the empty set where all the solution or all the positive uh, or the instance are uh, accepted and in the bottom we have all the predicates which means that all the points here are considered as negatives. And here the partial orders is uh, the subset uh, superset uh, relation. So it means that when I go down, I will reject some instances. And if I go up, I will accept some solution. And here I have what we call a version space. For example, the point here we have the conjunction between these three predicates. And these pre three predicates together, they will accept, they will make a split between this example between positives and negatives. Okay? And this is what we call a version space. So if we take another point, it's another version space because it classifies positive and negatives uh, in another way. And if this one, accept more than this one. This is why there is an order, a partial order between these uh, nodes, okay? So in constraint programming, we have uh, more or less the same uh, thing. So we have uh, the domain variables and all the possible uh, instance, uh, which is a, a full instantiation of all the variables. And if we take a point in this space, it will be a solution or no solution according to the set of constraints, but this set of constraints, I have to learn it. So the constraint acquisition is here to learn what we call the constraint network here. So we have exactly the same way. So B here or the bias or the basis here are all the constraints. So here we have uh, all the constraints and here we have an empty set. A network which is empty. So a network which is empty, it accepts all the solution. And a network which is take all the constraints, maybe C1 and the negation of C1 and so on. So it rejects all the solution. So if I learn a constraint, here we have one constraint. So I will accept uh, some solution and I will reject all the points that violate C1. So I have a partial order here. And if I take a, long, um, a point here, it represents a constraint network, C1 and C2 and C3. And the constraint acquisition process will try to, according to positive and negative, to find the good or uh, the, uh, the right constraint network corresponding to this classification. Okay, so this is a parallel with version space uh, learning. Okay. So let, let, uh, let me now um, define the, the problem, the constraint acquisition problem. So the input here, we have uh, X and D, which is the vocabulary. So the variables and domain. And what is missing here is C, the set of constraints. And the set of constraints, it, it's the, the thing that we will try to learn and it will be the output. So I have just, X and D, but I don't have C and I have to learn C, okay? And so as an input, we have the vocabulary and we have also a language 
constraint language, which is a set of relation. For example, if the problem, I know that my problem can be expressed using arithmetic uh, constraint, I can have or here a language with the relation on arithmetic. And uh, from the vocabulary and the, the language, I can produce what we call the basis. So the basis is all the constraint possible. So the relation, uh, the scalar product between the, uh, the relation and the, all the variables, I will have all uh, the constraint in the bias. And the assumption is that my, what I want to learn is inside B. It's something, it's a subset of B, okay? And I have a target network. A target network is the concept to learn. So the concept to learn is what the user has in, in mind. And we want to describe what the user has in mind using the constraint network, okay? And as an input, also we have the positive and negative, which consists, uh, which represents the training set. And if we come back to our uh, lattice here, so here we have the empty set. There is no constraint, and here we have all the possible constraint. And the lattice here uh, will. Uh, so here, for example, just to say that in this level we have one constraint per node. Here we have two constraints and so on. So the, uh, we have a, a partial order here between the networks. And what we want to, um, to learn is something inside this la lattice, which uh, represents the target network. So the target network here can be represented, for example, here by these three networks. And the objective is to return one of them, OK? And we will see that these three networks are equivalent in uh, in, in, in terms of number of solutions. They accept and they reject exactly the same solution and no solution, okay? <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, here in blue, this is what we call the version space. In the version space here, one of the nodes is uh, a good candidate, a good concept network that I can uh, uh, use. So. The, the training set uh, here, we have, a, if we are in the passive learning, so we have already positive and negatives. If I, uh, I am uh, in an active learning, so I have to produce the, the examples. I ask the user, classify it as a negative, so I go down. Ask the user, it's a positive, I go up, and so on. So here, at each time I have a negative, so I can go uh, down in the sense that, uh, uh, there is something to learn. A negative, from a negative, I learn a constraint. And from a positive, I learn something. I learned that this constraint can never be in my network. So I can go up, I remove all the constraints that cannot be in my network, and so on. Okay, so this is the, the constraint acquisition problem. So let me just uh, give you an example. Here we have an input. Okay, so uh, so the input here, we have three variables, and these three variables uh, can take uh, values uh, in this domain. And the language here, we have just uh, less than and equal, these two relations. So the bias here are all the possible constraints according to these uh, two relations and these three variables, okay? And the target, so the user uh, has in mind this target. So if he see this, a solution, he can say yes. So if uh, he sees something else than this uh, uh, instance, he will say, no, it's not a, a, a good solution for me. So according to this context, the acquisition uh, um, has the aim to produce a concept network that uh, classify correctly uh, the positive and negative. So the output at the end will be, can be L1, or L2. So here, we L L1, which is the network, which is here. So classify correctly these two solution and reject all the other uh, instantiation not in this target. And also we can have this uh, network. It's another network, but it's equivalent to this one because uh, they express the same thing. They express the target, okay? So it depends on our system. I can return this one or this one. Uh, whatever the network that I will return, it's correct one, and it's the one that uh, 
uh, do the job and the end. Okay. Okay. So this is for the example. So now uh, le le let us define the problem that we are interested in, which is the convergence problem. We want to converge. What what, what does it mean converge? So <clears throat> in uh, inversion spurs learning or in constraint acquisition here, uh, so I can have a training set. So the training set will help me to go down and imagine that I stack here for the negatives. And with the positive, I stack here. So I cannot say that I converge because I have a, a maximally specific network, which is here, and the maximally general network, which is here. So between this, I can accept or reject the unseen solution, but I can say nothing or on some uh, instance. So the, the convergence is that the uh, this uh, um, this inference go until the target, the, the equivalence class here. So it can reach one of these points and the positives can also converge to one of this. So if we, this uh, operation and this one, uh, they touch each other in a given node, I can say that I converge. So how this problem okay, is expressed. So I can, with this one, go to this point with the this operation i can go to, to this point and i can say i converge i can stop and i can return this one or this one uh, they are they are expressing the same thing so conversion problem uh, i can say that i converge if and only if i return l which is a constraint network that agrees with e the training set positive negatives this is the first condition okay the second one is that for any other network, C prime, which is a subset of B, so it means that it is inside, it is some, somewhere here, agreeing with E, so uh, satisfy this first condition, we can say that there is an equivalence between these two networks. So it's exactly the same uh, thing that happened here. So I can have this, this is C prime and this is L. So I can go here we have, if I have, so if I have just the first condition, I cannot say that I converge, but I have to prove that, that for, for, for any other network that classify correctly the, uh, the, the examples, there is uh, an equivalence in terms of, of solution. Okay, and the problem, uh, the convergence problem in constraint acquisition is a QNP complete problem. It's not a really an easy problem. So I will, I can invite you to, to see the, uh, uh, the theorem and the, 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 the proof in uh, the version, the journal version uh, of constraint acquisition. Okay. So uh, how can we tackle this this problem? Uh, there is something that uh, it's important to take into account. It's uh, <coughs> an assumption, so which is uh, an assumption made in uh, in machine learning in general. So uh, imagine that I have a, a target, uh, the, so a concept to learn. So I will define a basis according to a language, to a vocabulary, and I make uh, the assumption that what uh, uh, I have as language as vocabulary is expressive enough to express the target. So it means that the target is inside, okay? So in if I, I am in this case, uh, I can uh, guarantee the fact that uh, uh, my algorithm or my system will converge at the end to the right uh, concept network. But if the target is outside, it means that my language or my vocabulary, it's not expressive enough to express all the things that are in the target that are outside and here, in this case, in machine learning or in acquisition, we will reach the state or the collapse state. It means that all what we, uh, I learn, I have, uh, at the end, I find a contradiction or something. I try to learn something which is not inside, so I will report uh, a collapse state. Okay. So uh, CONAC uh, for constraint acquisition. This is the first system that to try to, uh, to to implement and to tackle this uh, convergence pro uh, problem uh, according to membership queries. So 
the this um so now we, we will talk about the system and we will talk about how to solve this uh, this uh, this problem so conac uh, at that time uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, was resulted uh, uh, from uh, a PhD thesis here in, uh, in my team in 2006. And after that, we continue working on concept acquisition with the European project. And we uh, make a lot of effort on this uh, direction. So the first uh, um, the first proposition of CONAC is based on what we call the membership query. So membership queries are uh, uh, example that uh, some I have uh, 10 variables so i will instantiate all the variables and present this to the user you will say yes or no so this membership queries means that all the variables take uh, a given value so in in conac we have uh, a sat based uh, representation uh, we will see how and it implements a bidirectional inference using membership queries it means that it implements the the top-down inference and the bottom-up uh, inference it take into account the negatives and the positive and we have proposed two versions the first one is uh, in a passive learning it means that i have training set i will try to learn what i can learn with this training set or we also have a connect to which is an active learning uh, version where here we try to converge or we, we, we aim to converge okay and so the idea behind uh, the rationale behind uh, uh, CONAC is to connect uh, literals. So in the sense of uh, SAT resolution, so we have literals, the Boolean variables that take one or zero to connect for each constraint in the bias. Imagine that in the bias, uh, in, in B, I have 100 constraints. So I will have 100 literals. And for each uh, constraint, I have its corresponding literal. And if the literal is equal to one, it means that this constraint must be in my network at the end. Okay? If it's zero, I say nothing. It can be or not. But the most important thing is that if it's equal to one, I have to get it in, in my network. Okay? So uh, how CONAC work? So at each time I have a positive, imagine that I have a, a complete instantiation, which is classified as a positive solution by the user. So if I have a positive solution, all the constraints that are violated, uh, the, all the constraints that uh, are violated by this example can never be in my uh, network. So it means that, for example, I have an example here, which is positive, that violate the C1, C4, and C7. So I can start to build my SAT formula by adding these three unitary clauses, saying that constraint one cannot be in my network, constraint four cannot be in my network, constraint seven cannot be in my network, okay? So now if I have a negative, this is another story. So if I have a negative, so all the constraints that reject, uh, that, are, that reject this example, they are candidate. So if I have a solu a solu uh, an instance that is a negative one, all the constraints that violate uh, are violated by this example can be in my network but I don't know if they all can be in my network or just one of them or three of them or two of them. So I can put add, I can add a close here saying that an example that violates C1, C3, C5 and C8. So the constraint to learn are one are here. So I don't know if are, they are two, three or just one, but they are here. So I can just say that x1 can be or x3 or x5 or x8 so at each time i have a positive i add this interesting clauses if i have a negative i can uh, add uh, clauses so this this operation can be very slow but this um, uh, operator this inference can be very fast by removing a constraint so at the end if i stop i can generate nothing 
I can just solve the SAT formula and what to, uh, the SAT will say. So I will say that X2, no, X4, no, X7, no. And if X1 at the end with the other clauses, it will say yes. So I will take C1 to my network and that's it, okay? And learning using membership query, so it means that I have a process, I will generate the membership query, complete instance that I present to the user. It will say yes, no, yes, no, and so on. In general, the problem need an exponential number of questions. So this is what we call the non-learnability using membership query. And here also we have the proposition and uh, a proof on this, uh, on this, okay? So it means that if I have a concept to learn, uh, in the worst case, I can generate a number, an exponential number of questions to reach the convergence or to learn the concept. Okay, so this is CONAC. And let, so here I just uh, sketched, <coughs> I give a sketched uh, version of the algorithm. So we have CONAC one, the passive learning. So for each example in the training set, I will identify all the constraints that are uh, reject um, that are rejecting E. So this constraint, uh, all the constraints that are rejecting E, uh, I will uh, identify them. So now, if the example is negative, I will uh, do a top-down inference. So I will try to add the uh, the the, uh, the big close that is here. So if now it's a positive, I make a bottom-up inference. So it means I add this uh, interesting closes. Okay. And at the end, I finish with all the training uh, set and I will check the convergence. I converge or not. It means that I will check if the maximally specific network is equivalent to the uh, maximally general network. <clears throat> okay. So here we have the main algorithm. Okay. So the input, we have the basis and the training set. And uh, the output will be the uh, closal theory or the first set formula here encoding the concept. Okay. So for the beginning, the, the, the formula is an empty one. And for each example, I will compute or identify all the concepts that are violating, uh, that are rejecting the example. So the example is violated, uh, violating the constraint. So the kappa here will take all the constraints violated by uh, the example. If uh, the example is classified as negative, I can, uh, I can, uh, I will add uh, this big uh, clause to my formula. Now, if it's positive, I will put this uh, monomial ones, the, this unitary clauses that say that I cannot have this, 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 and so on. So if now the uh, at a given point, the formula is unsatisfiable, it means that I detect a collapse state. I try to learn something which is not really in the basis. So I detected the collapse and I say, there is a problem in the example, something which is classified positive and at the same time classified negative or something like this, okay? So at the end, if I finish with all the examples, I will check the conversions. I converge or not. At the end, I can return the formula and I return converge or not. If it's not um, converging using the training set, that means that I learn what I, uh, I'm able to learn with the training set and I stop by saying that at the end, it's not a converging one. Uh, so uh, I see that there is a question, does this learning by example, application of imperfect classification. Yes, very interesting question. So here on version space learning, the main assumption that we, that, uh, that all people um, uh, do uh, on this uh, field is making the assumption that all the examples are classified correctly, okay? Uh, if there is something which is not uh, classified correctly, it means that at a given moment, I will detect a collapse state or I will learn something which is not correct and so on. 
and uh, we will discuss about this as a direction for uh, robust constraint acquisition in the sense that we can admit the fact that we have noise data where something which is not really uh, good classified and we try to see if our algorithm can detect this uh, uh, the, this uh, <coughs> this uh, kind of uh, uh, of problem and uh, uh, make a kind of a backtrack to uh, to to go ahead and to learn what we remain to learn uh, without uh, uh, collapsing okay thank you for the question very nice question so uh, le le let me continue so here so i just explained the top down inference and we have also here the bottom up inference okay so negative example i will add this close positive example i did i will add this uh, in carry uh, closes okay uh, so now for the active version of uh, Conac, so I don't have a training set, but I will uh, produce queries to ask to the user. So while not converged, so I will start, uh, I will try to do the process until convergence. So while not converged, what, uh, what I can do is to generate what we call an informative query. What is an informative query? It's query that whatever the classification, we will learn something new. So it means that I can learn new constraint or I can remove constraint that cannot be in my network. It's not a redundant uh, query. So informative query, how can I do this? I can just say that I want a constraint that satisfy the current state of my learning, the current state of L and violate something from B, what remain in B. And in this, this is, a, uh, uh, this is a condition, this is enough to be sure that what we will produce, it's an informative uh, query. So if no query is produced, it means that I converge it. I can produce no, nothing new, so I converge and I go out. If now the query is negative, top down, else bottom up. The main algorithm here, for the active learning. So we have the while, while not converged. I generate a query generation. So uh, um, <clears throat> uh, here, according to parameters, strategies, if there is a background knowledge or not, I'm sorry. But here, the idea here is to satisfy, to satisfy what I already learned, the formula phi, and to violate something in B. So I have this query. If I cannot re, um, generate this query, so it means that I converge. Otherwise, I will ask the query to the user, present, uh, submit the query to the user. If say, if he say, she say, uh, said no, I will learn uh, uh, the top-down inference. So I will learn this uh, closest. It's the same way as the passive learning. Otherwise, I will add this. Uh, 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 closes and until I converge and I return the formula and the solution of this formula represent exactly the uh, network that I want to present or uh, which is equivalent to the concept that the user has in mind. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is CONAC and uh, uh, now we can talk about more complex systems. So uh, we, we saw CONAC, now we can just uh, talk about, uh, I, uh, I just selected these three systems just to give you an idea about the different works in this direction using complex queries. So the matchmaker, uh, matchmaker agent at that time by uh, Froder and Wallace in, uh, in, in 97 III, they present uh, this uh, approach as uh, we, um, uh, we present something to the user, a solution, and the, solu and the user is able to say, uh, yes, it's a solution, or no, it's not solution. And this is the constraint that I have to, uh, that you have to put in, in the network, which is quite a uh, um, uh, strong assumption on the user. Uh, the query here is just not just yes, no, but in the case of no, I give why the user say no. I give exactly the constraint to add. So if uh, the network contain 10 constraints, 
I can have 10 negatives and I can learn the network. So this is the matchmaker agent. And also an extension of Conac uh, by Fredish and uh, et al. So argument uh, in the argumentation uh, domain, uh, there is uh, some uh, <coughs> well, uh, different works that try to explain why something, is, why something is negative or why something is positive. And here they extend CONAC with this argument. Uh, so if we have a negative, we will not just add uh, the, the clauses here. We can add the clauses and add more information behind that uh, will speed up the uh, the inference, the top-down inference, okay? And also for the positives, if there is something to add, I can uh, express them as an argument. And uh, another work uh, based on inductive logic programming, uh, which represent uh, the constraint network using predicates, and these predicates are catching uh, the structure of the problem. Uh, if, uh, for a graph coloring problem, for example, I have already predicated that I, they express the neighborhood uh, relation uh, and the different uh, uh, connection between uh, uh, in the vertices and so on. And in the same way with the positive and negative, we try to learn the, uh, the predicates that are translated after that uh, to a set of constraints. Okay. Uh, another system which is uh, completely different for, uh, from the ones that we seen until now, which is a model seeker proposed by uh, at that time by uh, Beldiciano and uh, Simonis. Uh, there is two papers, uh, CP11 and 12. The first one it's a constraint seeker. The second one is model seeker, which is uh, based on constraint seeker. So here the uh, the main idea here is. Um, and so we have, we, we have a passive learning, we have a training set, and is this training set contain only solution? So I make the assumption that I have solution, I have a time tabling for instance uh, solution, positive solution, and from this solution I can learn, uh, I will try to learn uh, the constraint. It's based on the global constraint catalog, which contains uh, more than 1000 description of the other different constraints that uh, <clears throat> proposed in CP community. Bottom up inference means that I can just go up with the positive. And uh, what to, so here, the fact that I have a bottom up inference, I can go up, go up until a, a network, and I propose this network to the user, and I can never uh, prove the convergence at the end. So I can propose something which can be very interesting at the end, but if there is um, something not really uh, structured in the problem. I will uh, not be able to learn them using model seeker. And I can just uh, uh, make the hope that what I will propose is good enough to the user. And uh, so the, this model uh, uh, show its performance on uh, very uh, interesting problems and very, uh, the, the, so the particularity of this problem that, uh, so they are, very structured problems. For example, here, just uh, to give an example, so the model seeker here is able to learn exactly the, the, the good scheduling uh, model of the Bundesliga, of the, the German uh, football Liga, just from one positive solution. So, uh, so the test here, we give a good solution of the last year uh, for of the, you know, the, the scheduling. And from this, we produce a good, the, 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 the right constraint network uh, to, uh, to produce new solutions uh, of, uh, of, of this problem. So just to, to, to give you an idea, here we have the Sudoku problem. I, have, uh, I can take one solution of the Sudoku problem where the, uh, all the, the cells are filled correctly. And I submit this positive solution to the model seeker is able to learn the all diff on the the rows, the all different constraint on the uh, columns, and the all different column uh, constraint on uh, the squares. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, here uh, model seeker will uh, take all the possible. So it's based on the stru uh, the structure of the, the the solution, saying that this one x one is. Uh, 
behind x2 and so on so make the all the lines all the columns and so on to deduce the constraint that can be taken from the global concept catalog and that can be proposed for this model okay so the drawback of uh, this kind of system is that if i give them now what we call the jigsaw sudoku for example this instance so it's the main uh, idea i have to fill and they have different values in the lines, the columns, and on the shape, different shapes. So we lose uh, the structure of, of the program. So here, if I give this uh, a good solution to the to to the uh, to model we will not be able to learn uh, this uh, this model. So if we have user constraints in the model, it means that I have regularities in the problem. Model seeker will be able to learn, but if there is something which is expressed uh, as a user concept, particular one of a teacher that he cannot be here uh, on Monday morning because uh, something uh, uh, linked to in, in, uh, her child or something like this. We cannot uh, layer this uh, user constraint using model seeker. Okay. So now let uh, just to check the time. Okay, so we have. Uh, a half an hour to talk about uh, Quack, which is uh, the main uh, contribution of uh, uh, of um, uh, in this uh, in this field. So Quack for quick acquisition. So uh, the idea here is uh, like uh, Conac. So we have the, the bidirectional uh, search with the top down and the bottom up search. You take the negatives and the positives. Uh, it's an active learning approach. It generates queries, and the what what is new in this uh, in this approach is the introduction of what we call the partial queries. So we have the membership queries that are here to uh, to express uh, a complete instantiation of the variables. The partial queries I have just some variables that are instantiated, and I will submit this partial query to the user to classify as positive or negative. And according to these partial queries, we develop uh, some algorithm to elucidate the scope of the constraint to learn. And we will see uh, this point together with an example. And this solution using the partial queries, uh, it's asymptotically uh, optimal in the number of queries. OK? So uh, partial queries, what is a partial query? Here we have the n queens problem. So I don't know if you are familiar with this problem. So we, I have to put the, the queens on, on each row or in each uh, uh, column uh, in, the, in the way that I have no pair of uh, queens that attack uh, each other. So here, for example, I can see that we have a membership queries where all the variables have a value. And if I ask the question, this question to the user, he will see the solution. I will say, no, it's negative one. It's negative because uh, there is a problem with these uh, two queens that are in the same line, these two queens that are in the same first di diagonal, uh, the second diagonal, and so on. So there is a lot of explanation why the user can say no here. OK, so this is the membership query. The partial query is, is some variables that are associated. And we ask the user, is it? uh correct for you to have this partial instantiation they will say no the, uh, i uh, here i have problem so no it's a, a negative one and he can we can also submit this partial query uh, is this uh, positive or negative so we will see and he will say yes there is no problem for the moment there is no problem because uh, the answer here is just to say that these variables that are associated, there is no problem with these values locally uh, on, on these variables. But it doesn't mean that this uh, partial instantiation can be extended to a solution. This is not uh, uh, a good uh, uh, thing to, uh, to, to ask for a user. So otherwise, we put uh, an NP complete problem uh, on the shoulders of, 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 of the user and just ask him if this partial association is good or not, okay, on these two variables. 
And using this uh, partial queries, we can see that we can uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, a top-down uh, inference, which is very very uh, uh, speed comparing to uh, to Conac. Okay. So uh, how Quark uh, works? So we can we have a, a query generation. We generate a membership query, a complete solution to the user. If the user say yes, so I will reduce uh, the basis by removing all the constraints that are violated by uh, this example. Now, if the user say no, now I can go with the partial queries to try to uh, have an explanation why the user say no. So a complete example classified as negative, we try to find the scope. So we try to find where there is a problem. Where is the problem? If I give a time tabling uh, instance and this user say no, so I will try to see uh, until having that uh, in Monday afternoon, there is a problem, for example. Or for the end queens example, I can say that the problem is between X1 and X5, okay? So once I have the scope of uh, the constraints to learn, I will uh, ask, uh, I will call another function where this function will learn the correct uh, relation between these variables. Imagine that here I have uh, 10 variables. He say no. I will try to find the, uh, why the user say no. One possible explanation is between x1 and x5. I submit x1, x5 to find c. And find c will say between x1 and x5, it must be a different relation. So x1 different to x5. And here, this is the constraint that uh, I put to my network. And at the end, I will check if all the basis is reduced to empty. If it's the case, it means that I converge and I return the constraint network to the user. Okay, this is uh, how Quack uh, acts. So here we have the algorithm, the main algorithm. <clears throat> so as an input, we have the basis and the output, the constraint network. So at the beginning, the constraint network is empty and I will build it uh, until I return it, it at the end. So while true, I will generate an example that satisfy L and violate a part of B. This example, if I cannot produce this query, it means that I converge and I return L. Otherwise, I ask the user, is it a positive? You say yes, I will reduce B. Uh, by removing all the constraints that are violated by this example. Otherwise, I will find the scope, then find the, the constraint that I will update it uh, with <clears throat> N. So I go uh, through this uh, main loop until convergence, okay? So here is just to say that uh, the generate example here, compute an assignment, on a subset of variables y, satisfying the constraint of L that have a scope included in y, but violating at least one constraint from B to be sure that this is an informative query, okay? So let me continue. Uh, I will now explain the two functions, find scope and uh, find C. So the find scope, uh, so which is the main, uh, the, the milestone of of uh, of quark and so uh, the good <clears throat> the good theoretical um, uh, results uh, uh, of quark is linked to the fact that here we have uh, an uh, elucidation uh, process that can find exactly where the problem is in a logarithmic number of queries. So here, imagine that we have this negative example. So find scope, we try to learn or to, to return quickly one of this explanation. Here we have one explanation, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? So it means one of them, if I can return this explanation, 
it's enough and I can go until learning the concept between these two. So quack at each time I have a negative, I learn one concept. Konak at that time, at each time we have a negative, I have a proposition of several concepts, but I don't know which one to take. And I hope that the following queries can make a decision on, between this concept. But now it's the, the, a different qu question here. What When we have a negative one, I am sure that I will go down until having the concept to learn by using the partial query. So uh, the, uh, how does work this function? So we have a find scope that take negative example and take all the, all the variables. And we have a set, what we call R here, which is a background of variables that will help us to uh, compute uh, the scope of the variables. So uh, the, the process is uh, we, we have a, a the a recursive call of, uh, of the function. We have two calls of the fine scope in the fine scope here, and we have a split of uh, the set of variables. So uh, for the beginning, I will ask uh, uh, the question on the part of, uh, uh, of the background. If the user say no, I will return an empty set. If y is reduced to a singleton one variables, I will return these variables. Otherwise, I will split y and I call find scope two times. The first call will take on y, the first part of y, and the second part of y union uh, the background. And what result from this call, I will put it in S1, which is a set of variables. And the second call will use the result S1 in the background. And we call the first one is on y1, the second one is on y2. And uh, doing so, I can return the, the second part of the, of the answer. And at the end, I return the, the union of the two answers, S1 and S2. Just an example. <clears throat> Here, we have uh, a negative. Imagine that we have a negative example, E, on uh, five variables. So I just put the indices of the variables. So here we have variable one, variable two, three, four, and five. So we have five variables. And the expected, the, so why the example is negative? It's because there is a problem between variable two and variable five. And there is another explanation because there is a, a problem between variable two, three, and four. There's, there is a ternary variable, a ternary uh, constraint to learn here. So which is, what is, in, uh, what is interesting in uh, fine scope, it can return uh, whatever the, the RET of the constraint. I can have a problem expressed with constraint on binary, ternary. The most important thing is uh, bounded number of variables. So I can have whatever I want as constraint in my network. At the end, I can learn it. So if I have unary constraint, binary, and so on, I can use Quark and I will learn the, the constraint. <coughs> So to come back to our example here, if find scope return me this one or this one, I will be happy. Okay, if it returns something else, it means that the function is not the correct one. Okay, so let's add just uh, execute the the function <coughs> together. So here we have the function. So I will call the first call is on the negative example or all the variables, and I will have an empty set here. Okay, at the first call. So uh, here, an ask on the empty set. So it's, uh, there is no ask here because I ask on the empty set. I will check why if it's singleton. No, because we, can, we have five variables. So I will split. So I split between y1 and y2. So I will call the second. I will call find scope with y1. So here we have <coughs> the first call here. On one, two, I split here, one, two, and in the other part, we have three, four, five, because three, four, five union empty set. So it's, it's represented here R. And a question on R. So if I ask a question on the value of variable three, variable four, and variable five, the user will say, yes, it's positive. Why? 
because here there is no um, the, there is no problem with the value of these three variables. There is no two five and there is no two three four. So the answer is yes. So here we have yes. So he say here he say yes. So we will not return empty set and we will check. Is it a singleton here? No. So I have to split it again. And here we have the counter of the queries. I ask one queries for the moment. So I will split this. Okay, so now I split, I have one and the two here will go in the background. So the background here, two, three, four, five. I ask the question on the background here. And here the user say no. Why? Because I have two and five here, you see? And I have also two, three, four. So the answer is no. And if the answer is no, it means that here I return empty set. So it's an empty set. Okay, so I finish with the first call. I go to the second call here with the empty set union, the background that I get before, three, four, five. So here I split it one, two. I do the thing with one. Now I have to do with two and the background. A question on three, four, five. So here we have, yes. And I already asked this question here, if you remember. So here I say, uh, it's the question is yes. So it means that I cannot return empty set and I will check. Why is it a singleton? Yes, so I return it, I return two. So first call, I return empty set. Second call, I return uh, two. So at the end, I return empty set union two. So these two results will be the result of this one. Okay, so I finish with this part. Now I have to go to the second call of the first fine scope. So I finish with this one by splitting this. I can go now to the second part. The second part, I take for the first part one, two. Now I, uh, I take three, four, five. Three, four, five and in the background, I have an empty set union, the result. So it means two. I ask a question on two. He say, yes, there is no problem with the value on X2. Three, four, five, is it a singleton? No, so I split. Three and the background here, two, five, four. Is it a negative? Yes. So here the answer is a negative one. So I return an empty set. I call the second one, I have four, five, and the result of uh, two, which is a background here. I ask the question four, five, uh, two, is it positive? Yes. Four, five, is it a singleton? No, so I split. Four in this sense. And here we have two, five. Two, five, is it a negative? Yes, because this scope. So I return empty set. The second call I have five, and in the other we have two. Two, is it a positive uh, equation on two? Is it positive? Yes. Five, is it singleton? Yes, so I return it. So five and empty will be five. Five and empty will be five. So here we have a mistake. So it's five here. And five with two will be two five here. And here the call, the first call will return the scope, one of them. If I make a shuffle on these variables, maybe I will return this, okay? And the complexity of this function is uh, in uh, log n, where n is the number of variables. So in a dichotomic way, I can elucidate, I can find where is the problem, okay? So once I get, uh, exactly the, the position of the problem and I elucidate the scope, where is exactly the problem, I can now ask how to uh, learn the constraint between uh, these uh, variables. <clears throat> so uh, find C here, uh, we'll start with all, uh, so given Y, I, I, I will take an example, so to go faster. So here I have, I return X1 and X2. So X1 and X2 is the scope and the concept to learn between X1 and X2 is to be different. For example, 
So the delta will take all the relation in the language. And in a dichotomic way here, I will try to generate an example that satisfy a part and violate a part. And for example, here, E1, it's uh, an example, it's a negative one that satisfy a part and uh, 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 violate one. So I will keep, if it's negative, I keep in delta constraint rejecting E. If it's positive, I remove from delta constraint rejecting E. And at each iteration, we reduce the size of delta until having exactly the constraint to learn, which is here different, and we return the constraint. So here it's doing, uh, it's done using uh, the partial queries. And at the end, I using find C and find scope, I will exactly learn the, uh, the right constraint to put in, in my network. So in terms of complexity, so here uh, there is no learnability using uh, CONAC. Now with the QUAC, we have a polynomial number of queries to ask to the user to learn the concept. So here the log, uh, it's about, uh, the find scope and here gamma uh, in find C is linear on, on the size of gamma. And at the end, in, in terms of number of constraints that I will learn at the end, I have this complexity for the top down inference. For to prove the convergence, I have to ask a question. And in the worst case, I have the size of B. For example, I have only positives, and at each time a positive remove one constraint from B. And this is the worst case where each question remove one uh, constraint from B. And at the end, I have a, a number of queries, which is uh, equal to the size of B. Okay. So we have uh, 10 minutes to, uh, to, uh, to discuss about, uh, we'll start with the, the limitation of quack. So the limitation of quack, there is three limitations. The first one is the large number of queries that we can ask to the user. So for example, to learn Sudoku uh, model, we have to ask uh, more than 9,000 uh, queries uh, to the user. <clears throat> the second one is about uh, generating uh, a query. So uh, especially at the end of when we want to, uh, before the convergence, here we try to satisfy L and violate what remain in B. And it can be time consuming to find a query uh, and, uh, which is informative one. For example, here for Sudoku, at the end, we can spend more than 20 minutes just to, to, to generate a, a question to, to submit to the user. And the third point, uh, more or less a limitation, but it's a, a, um, a point that I, I wanted to discuss with you uh, on the limited practical application for the moment. And we, we aim to uh, to show the, the impact of this uh, cons uh, of these techniques in a practical application. So a solution for the first uh, limitation, which is uh, the number of queries. So we, we have worked on uh, uh, several uh, techniques to speed up and to reduce the number of queries. For example, by introducing complex queries. Um, like here we have an example of uh, generalization queries uh, where uh, imagine that I learn a constraint uh, between uh, uh, teachers, uh, lectures, and uh, some rooms for time tabling. If I learn one constraint, I can ask generalization query saying that, is it a constraint that can be generalized on all the teachers? If the user say yes, I will learn all the constraint on these variables in one shot. And this can reduce uh, up to 80% of the queries, okay? For example, for a, a Sudoku, if I remember well, we go from 9,000 uh, queries to uh, uh, really uh, uh, less than, uh, more or less 100 queries to learn the, uh, the Sudoku model. And we have also the recommendation queries, which is based on some, uh, some, uh, uh, data mining uh, techniques. Imagine that I am learning uh, a part of, of the network and I saw that there is a click, uh, a quasi click that is uh, quite, uh, uh, that is uh, 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 formed from, from, my, uh, from my learning and I can stop a moment and propose a constraint to the user. 
can I add this constraint to the network? If you say yes, I learn it without uh, asking a partial query. So I can have a mining on the graph, a mining on the network, uh, constraint network at a given moment, and propose some constraint that can be, uh, with the given probability, can be in my network. And we also worked on more elicitation. So Quack uh, presented as uh, for a negative I love one constraint. So and we saw that in uh, N Queens we have several uh, explanation why uh, uh, it is a negative one. So multi act or uh, M Quack here try to learn all this constraint in one shot. So from one negative, I learn all the constraints. So if, for example, if I have a Sudoku which uh, the, the negative is, uh, the negative solution is uh, uh, is the puzzle where we have in the cells exactly the same value uh, in all the cells. It means that all the constraints of the network are violated. And here I will do uh, all the work to extract all the scopes and all the constraints in one shot. Okay. So this is for uh, some some answer from the for the first. Uh, uh, limitation. The second one is for time uh, consumption. And here also we, we have proposed some adaptive and time bounded query generator. So resonating on, uh, on the, the hardness of uh, the instance to solve and try to reduce the number of variables until finding uh, a part that produce informative query without uh, with the guarantee that we will never exceed one second, for example. Okay. And uh, as, uh, an answer to question uh, to limitation one and two, at the same time, I can talk to you about uh, our future work in uh, in concept acquisition. So we can uh, talk about parallel concept acquisition. So we can uh, here for uh, for a number of queries, we can imagine that instead of asking nine thousand queries to one user, we can ask one question to nine thousand users in crowdsourcing uh, uh, context. Imagine that the concept is shared between a lot of users. And uh, here in a parallel concept acquisition, I can reduce the number uh, of questions asked per user, okay? And doing so, I can also reduce the time of generating a query. Uh, another direction is to use uh, neural networks in uh, concept acquisition where I can start the acquisition where the user will say yes, no, classification, and so on. And uh, at the same time, we have a neural network that try to learn what the user, uh, how the user is classifying, is classifying the examples. And at a given moment, the neural network will take the place of the user and you will classify for free what remain uh, as queries, okay? A uh, few words about uh, the applicability of uh, Quack. So we have, uh, so there is a lot of works that try to use concept acquisition for scheduling problems. And in this uh, direction, it's uh, uh, how uh, can we adapt the concept acquisition to be faster and to be more efficient for particular kind of problem, which is scheduling problem. And here we have uh, a particular kind of constraint that can be uh, uh, where we can also have user constraints behind. And uh, the idea is to develop some new systems that are dedicated for this kind of problems. Uh, I know also that there is a team that works on timetabling acquisition, where we have an acquisition system that talk about the, with, uh, talk with the different teachers, uh, trying to learn uh, the concept or to talk about with the different nurses to have the ROST uh, uh, solution or um, planning for a nurse uh, rostering problem and this kind of things. We have a PhD also that work on uh, software verification and validation, trying to learn automatically the different precondition uh, to use for uh, uh, as a constraint for an SMT solver or this kind of things. And uh, to the another point, which is an interesting one and uh, uh, that we want to uh, investigate is to uh, uh, <clears throat> to equip uh, industrial robots with concept acquisition skills. 
uh, where the robots in, uh, uh, in learning robots can try to 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 find uh, a, a good trajectory in a combinatorial context where we have obstacles and so on and they need to find the, the right trajectory uh, without knowing at the beginning the concept so a concept acquisition can be used to just learn all the concept all the obstacles and the solver after will find the solution and say you can go left uh, up uh, down and so on just an example okay uh, another point uh, a direction that it can be very interesting to have at the end is uh, a concept acquisition toolbox a toolbox where uh, we can imagine that we have a query type taxonomy uh, where we can define uh, the different uh, different systems according to three uh, kind of complexities number of queries uh, how uh, the time to build the, the queries and the answering uh, complexity in a connective way does that uh, can we answer to the question uh, fastly or it's very hard to answer this kind of concept and depending on the context depending on the problem that we want uh, to use a concept acquisition, I can select the S1 as a system or another uh, to use uh, at the end. And uh, uh, to, uh, I, I, we already have a question on this. We want also to have a, a, a robust uh, toolbox where it can uh, learn and it can uh, uh, return the, uh, the networks. Uh, and the false positives or false negatives. So we can detect uh, the problem and the collapse state and try to, so, to, to backtrack or to return to a conformity situation and go ahead for learning the remaining constraints. Okay. Uh, so um, <clears throat> uh, to sum up, uh, we saw together constraint acquisition, uh, which is a domain that uh, has attracted a considerable atten uh, attention in the recent years with several work systems and the publications. And uh, uh, we believe that concept acquisition is, very, is the key to enable uh, the spread of CP technology in industrial fields, uh, that we, uh, especially in continuous development process. We can imagine that uh, there is already existing solution uh, in industry using CP. And now we have new uh, nurses, uh, we have a new uh, users, uh, we have users that uh, left the, the company and so on. So new constraints uh, uh, to add and we can call the acquisition system to add this new constraint to the model. Uh, another interesting point for, uh, to use quack-like solution is the fact that uh, they are explainable in the sense that if there is something uh, wrong uh, after or something to explain, we can have uh, the traces and explain uh, at, uh, at what time these constraints have been learned or uh, what, uh, what is uh, misleading in the classification and so uh, or something like this. And an interesting direction that, uh, uh, that can be um, uh, um, uh, taken as a future work is uh, to you know, to to make uh, an hybrid learning to solve the constraint acquisition problem. So we can imagine uh, the, the the idea here is to imagine several scenarios where we can combine symbolic learning with the with quack, for example, and uh, neural networks at the same time to boost some learning or learn fastly. Uh, some structure of the problem. This is a good direction to take, I think. And also we can <clears throat> just say uh, to finish that uh, Coconut team is a good place to learn more about acquisition. And we will be happy to, uh, to, to, uh, to see you uh, with us in the team in, uh, to do a postdoc or to discuss about the things or to see you in uh, other um, contexts for one week, two weeks and so on. Uh, so we'll be uh, very, very happy to discuss with you about constraint acquisition. 
So uh, this part is dedicated to exercises. You can find like, the one on Quark, on Conac, or on Quark, one on FindScope, one on FindC to, to, to understand very well uh, the, the different algorithm. Uh, I don't know, we have, how we have time for a demo. It's uh, 6 p.m. So just tell me, Christian, if I can or not. And this is the, for the last slide, just to, say, to tell you that we will be happy. We hope <coughs> uh, uh, we will. Uh, uh, we hope that the current crisis uh, will come to an end, that the world will get back uh, to normal, and that uh, we all uh, will be able to meet and to see you in Montpellier for a CP conference in uh, 2021. So just uh, uh, tell me, Christian, if uh, I can make some demo or if I yes. can go to the question, if there is any question. So don't yes, know. of course, you, you can uh, make your demo, uh, your session. Uh, you still have half an hour if you want. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so you can take questions or make a demo and in the order you want. So yeah, so <clears throat> just tell me if there is a, any question, don't uh, hesitate. So just uh, uh, we can discuss together about, uh, otherwise I can just um, uh, stop uh, sharing the slides and I will share with you uh, the demo. So uh, I will start with, <clears throat> uh, with sharing the, my terminal. Okay. So I don't know if uh, you see my terminal. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, good. So uh, here uh, we, uh, I gave you a link for a version of Quark, which is a developer that is on the top of uh, Shoko, it's using the Shoko solver, and we have a, a Quark with the different algorithm and different uh, uh, things that we presented until now. So you can download it, use it, and uh, implement the things inside. So feel free; it's uh, an open source uh, project, and uh, so and we will be happy to have all your question and all your. Uh, remark and uh, comments on on the code. So uh, just to I, I make an, a jar, uh, uh, an executable one. So here, uh, if you run uh, Quark, you can use it on terminal. And here we have uh, you can uh, develop your own uh, problems with your own uh, way to classify the, uh, the examples. For example, here we have several problems. The and queens. So here we have a checker that say, if you give something which is good or not, he will say yes or no. And according to this, he will learn all the constraints. Okay, uh, you can use it in a graphical mode. Uh, you can use different heuristics to, to, to produce the, qu the queries, uh, different instances and so on. So there is a lot of uh, options here. So I will just um, uh, show you an example. For example, the third day, uh, problem, put it in verbose mode. So <clears throat> here I will run, uh, here I just ran Quack and we started with uh, 900 uh, uh, constraint in the bi uh, bias. And here it's the first uh, constraint that we learned, second and so on, so on. We have statistic here. And if I take, for example, uh, Queens, uh, with the instance uh, eight, uh, I forgot it. It's variables mode. So here you can find all the the constraint that we learned, and uh, at the end we converged with the with the solution. Uh, so this is um, uh, I can also uh, show you. Uh, the end. Um, we, we, we built an interface just to explain the things on on acquisition. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I will. Uh... Oh, uh, it's. Uh... Najib, you you have a you have a question. Someone would like to. Yes. Go. 
uh, a question. Yes, go ahead. Maybe you could uh, uh, copy the, the link in the in the chat of Quack. Uh, could you please show again the link of Quack? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, okay, copy okay. it in, uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, now open. So you have you have one. Uh, uh, I have this demo uh, open. Out of the demo. So you can play with this. And this is the GitLab link to download and to use what we are seeing now as an executable jars. OK, this is the two links. And now I will share with you uh, the interface. Up. Up. I don't know if you see something. Do you see the interface now? Yes. OK. So uh, just to uh, show you, uh, uh, to show throat and the, the example. So here we have the, the end queens. Uh, we have eight queens. And uh, so we will see when we run Quack, uh, the different solution, non-solution, partial solution, and uh, uh, that appears here. And uh, here we have the bio, uh, the basis where we have all the constraints. We have the eight variables here. Oh, we have the variables and we have uh, a complete graph with the, all the constraints on. Uh, so the basis here, we have uh, 280 constraints, the different constraints, uh, equality constraints, constraints on the diagonal in out greater than, so arithmetic constraints. Here we will have the statistics on uh, queries, positive or negative, uh, the total number, uh, if they are partial or complete, and the total number. And at the end, we will have here our uh, concept network. So just to run, here the, we have B, which is a complete graph, and here we have L, which is an empty uh, network. We have the eight variables, and it's uh, an empty one. And if I run it, I will see that we will learn um, all the constraints of the end queens. So just to run it, here we have the solution, no solution. So the bias is reduced. And at the end, I have uh, the constraint, the, my network here. So at the end, what I learned is 28 different constraints, 28 uh, in dia out diagonal one and out diagonal two, which they represent the, uh, the concept network of the end queens. Okay, and here we have uh, a solution, a positive solution. And what we can observe here is that uh, here we can, uh, we have a partial examples, partial positives and partial negatives and the total number. And we have the complete and we can see that quack, which is a good uh, or an, an interesting thing for quack, it can learn all the networks uh, using only the negative. And at the end, maybe we have one positive, a complete positive that say that we converge at the end. And this is very interesting in acquisition where we can use the acquisition as a solver. So we can start with the network, which is really empty. And we want to solve a problem and using an acquisition uh, process, we ask uh, partial queries, negative examples, and so on, until having the solution. And here we can, I can illustrate, I will uh, just uh, stop this one. I can uh, show you with a zebra problem. So zebra problem, the, which, what is interesting with the zebra problem is that uh, we have, it's a combinatorial problem and we have only one solution. And we have exactly one solution. So uh, we are able to learn uh, the model of zebra problem uh, only with negatives, uh, complete negatives. So here we have the P of zebra. So for the zebra problem, 
we have uh, up. Let's to make it comfortable. So the, the that consists of uh, 25 variables of five values, and we have different houses, uh, nationalities, colors, uh, pets, drinks, and so on. And at the end, we have one solution. Uh, so here we have all the bias, which is quite dense. We have more than uh, four, um, uh, more or less than 5,000 constraints, uh, unary constraints, binary constraints, and so on. Uh, on the 25 variables. And if I run Quack here, we can see that up here we start to have the examples, partial example, and so on. And we learn uh, the different constraints one after the other. Here we have one constraint, uh, binary ones. The different constraints we are at uh, 57, 34. And at the end, we will empty the bias. It's an empty one. And at the end, we get the uh, zebra problem, uh, the network that represents the zebra problem. The zebra problem can be expressed with you know, 47 different constraints. Uh, this equality between uh, <coughs> uh, uh, four, and we, we have uh, uh, equalities between uh, eight uh, constraints or uh, of equalities, and we have uh, some unary constraint. So at the end, representing the uh, the 12 or the 11 uh, particular question that we find in, in the zebra problem. And what we, we saw here that exactly as uh, the previous example, uh, we can we can stop learning until 62 uh, complete uh, negative ones. The, the last one is produced to say this is the solution and uh, the bias is an empty one. So we can imagine that here, what we try to do here is use is to use um, Quack as a solver. We start from nothing and we go until having the positive, the complete solution, which is the solution of the problem. And we, we, we have a paper on this uh, in 2014 or 15, uh, expressing the way that we can use acquisition as a solver. And the title at that time is uh, Solve a Problem Without Modeling It. So th this is the idea, the main idea uh, on this. So uh, yes, uh, uh, just tell me if there, are, there is any question or... Uh, So uh, the course, uh, course uh, so just to uh, to be sure to understand the question of Lionel uh, here uh, about uh, uh, the logical rules. So here in the bias, uh, uh, the, the basis is expressed uh, is expressed according to a given language. So if the language can express uh, logical rules uh, as an elementary constraint in the basis. And uh, the classification by uh, by the way will uh, differentiate the different constraints in the basis. Uh, we will uh, get uh, the network uh, with these logical rules without any problem. So the, here we have no assumption on the kind of constraint that we can have. The main assumption is that we have a boundary constraint. We cannot have a global constraint. Because if I say uh, I can, I would like to put all different in the bias, to put all different on uh, on which scope. So the bias is a, fi a final set of constraints. If I put uh, a relation which is a non-bounded relation, it means that I will have an exponential number of uh, constraints. Or, or different, for example, in the bias. And here, uh, the, the, the first assumption to say that the, bi the, the basis is a set, a finite set of constraints, it uh, doesn't hold. But for to come back to your question, we can have uh, any kind of, uh, uh, of constraints. So the, the, the network behind, the, the main thing is that these logical rules can 
if we can express them uh, uh, under a CP solver, we will learn them. Okay, so we learn constraint networks. So the logical rules here, for example, I don't know, or, or refute constraint of amplications or something like this. We already have some problems that have this kind of uh, of uh, of relations, and we uh, are able to learn this kind of things uh, without any problems. Okay. <clears throat> Any other question? Okay, so People, I may be a bit tired at this uh, at the yeah, advanced so. hour of the of the evening. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks a lot for uh, for your presentation, for your lecture, and also for the nice uh, um, demo. Uh, it's a very beautiful uh, software that you have. Uh, so uh, Najib and Samir uh, will be uh, available on Discord. I think uh, yeah. you say tomorrow morning or. Um, don't, I will don't be here tomorrow morning. Yeah. So uh, yes, tomorrow hesitate, morning if you need, uh, for the okay. Christine Solnon lecture. So don't hesitate to to contact uh, them on the Discord platform. Uh, we will make the videos available on the website and also the slides. So uh, thank you everyone for your participation. Thank you again, uh, Samir and Najib, for these nice lectures. And also see you tomorrow at 11 for Christine Solnon lectures on experimental evaluations. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank bye you. bye.